Please be, please be seated. Uh, it's, it's, it's humbling to, to stand before you all tonight. Uh, do appreciate you taking time out of your, your busy schedules. Um, I know time is valuable. You could invest your time in so many other things. So I do appreciate you coming out and, and joining us tonight. I mean, we have a great crowd, standing room, room only. You can't ask for, for better than that. So thank you for each and every one of you uh, that have come out tonight uh, to show your support and, and to get involved. I think most of you probably know my background, what, why I got involved. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I, I grew up on the mission field. Parents were missionaries. Grew up over in Eastern Europe. So I, I like to say it this way. I've seen the dark side of government. I've seen what, what socialism really is. I've seen the effects of communism. And with our up and coming generations, you know, I, it, I, to be honest, it sounds good. I mean, who wouldn't want free everything, right? <laughs> I mean, wouldn't we all want that? But that's just not reality. Like Margaret Thatcher said, the problem with socialism is eventually you run out of other people's money. It just doesn't work. So we can't be saying free college, free healthcare, free everything for everyone. That's just unsustainable. And our country currently is $20 trillion in debt. We just crossed the 20 mark, $20 trillion in debt, which means every single child born in the United States today automatically owes $50,000 to foreign countries like China and Japan and Germany and other countries. They're already in debt. We're putting future generations in debt. Not only is it unsustainable, we cannot continue down this path indefinitely. We are headed for a cliff. It's also immoral. It's absolutely wrong to do that for future generations. Like Lakin is 10 now, 11, yeah, so, and she was three when we, when we first started this process. And my message has stayed the same. And back then, I don't know, we probably would have been maybe only $12 trillion in debt, if you wanna say only for $12 trillion. But over the, the good old days, yeah, before we were adding a trillion dollars a year to, to our national debt. We cannot continue down that path indefinitely. I've seen what happens with inflation. That's what got me so actively involved when I first moved back here to Broken Arrow a decade ago, is I, I know the path that we are headed down and, and I couldn't sit idly by. You know, it's been a privilege to be in the State Senate for the last five years, to be able to represent my district uh, in, the, in, the, in the Senate. But I realize that what I do at the state level doesn't just impact my district, it impacts everybody in the state. But as the next congressman for the first congressional district, what I do won't just impact the first district or Oklahoma. Those votes at the federal level will impact everyone across the United States. And since America is the leader of the world, it can have repercussions across the entire world. I understand how huge that responsibility is. And so I appreciate you all coming out and showing your support and helping us to get there. Like so many people have said, I will work hard. There's, there's a reason I'm known at the Capitol as the guy that reads every bill because I take the time to read the bills. That's not easy. When we come up against a, a deadline week and they put 50 or 100 bills on the agenda the night before and we're going in at 9.30 the next morning to vote on those bills, I stay up all night long reading those bills. I, st I will spend the next 24 hours even on the floor reading bills trying to stay caught up on it. It's not easy. That's why nobody else does it. It's easier just to follow the crowd and vote however you think you should, you know, how everybody else is voting. That's not me. I will work hard for you. I promise you that. You know, as we've knocked doors, and we've already knocked thousands of doors, and we will continue to knock doors. And if you want to help us knock doors, we will gladly take your help. It's great exercise. The weather's getting cooler. Well, not right now. It's still 90 degrees, you know, the end of September. It's Oklahoma. Like Will Rogers said, you don't like the weather in Oklahoma, wait 10 minutes. Um, so we'll gladly take your help as, as we knock doors. But as I've knocked doors, sometimes people ask me, well, what are you going to promise me? Because, you know, most politicians have a promise. And this is my promise to you. This is what I tell people. What I promise to you is that I will faithfully uphold my oath to the Constitution. That's what I promise to you. I'm not going to promise you any freebies. I'm not going to promise you any giveaways. I will uphold my oath to the Constitution because that's my responsibility. I feel like that's my moral obligation. But we're looking at, with this election, we're going to have to reach 40 to 50,000 voters. That's a lot of people. I will try and reach as many of them as I personally can. But I have other obligations in my current role as state senator. Myself and Marty, and I saw Representative McEachin came, snuck in. We were down at the state capitol today, earlier this afternoon, because we started special session. So we drove up here today. So that was time that took me away from being able to campaign for this, because I'm not going to neglect my current responsibilities. 
that means that I'm going to need help. I need other people. We have a great ground game. We have the best ground game in the state. We will knock more doors than anybody else. We will make calls to everybody else. But like Eddie said, it does take money to be able to advertise on, advertise on TV. They're not just going to tell us, well, you knocked a bunch of doors, you know, you knocked a thousand doors this week. Okay, we'll give you advertising for free. They don't do that. Now, knocking doors is a great way to advertise, a great way to reach people. We're not going to neglect one for the other, but it does take that money. So what I would ask, and I know a lot of people up here have already asked for, for donations tonight, but I would ask you to do something because we are going up against other people that have money, that, that can self-fund, that can loan themselves as much money as they want to try and buy a title, to try and buy a position. But that's the problem that we have in Washington, D.C. right now. We have too many of those types of people. We need people that understand what it's like to do the right thing because you said that's what you would do, that understand the Constitution. So I would ask that you would do something. The end of this month is a, a filing period when we have to report our numbers. It would be great to have large amounts of numbers to report. So if you want to donate the max amount, it's 5,400 per couple, 2,700 per individual, we'll take that. But if you can't do that, if you can do something, if we can show numbers, if we can say we have more individual donors, even at five or 10 or 50 or $100, that speaks volumes. Because people realize behind every person that donates, not only is there a vote, but there's 10 other votes or 20 other votes. Because you all have a sphere of influence that I may not get the opportunity to reach myself personally. So if you can do something, I would ask that you can do something. We do have a punch wall over here where you can donate and, and get a prize. We have gift cards, different things in there. We have silent auction items. We're gonna have a live auction. So we have things that you can get something as well as giving something. But the thing that I would say, because I started talking about the $20, 20 trillion dollars in debt, is I would ask that you would look at this as an investment in the future. You're gonna pay one way or the other. You're either going to continue to pay in the national debt and the devaluation of our currency, or you can support us now and send somebody to Washington, D.C. that will fight the out-of-control spending, that will fight the reckless spending in D.C. Yes, I realize it's going to cost you something, but it's either going to cost you a little now or a lot later. So I would ask that you do something. I know how, I can't say how many times this over and over again, that it's so humbling, because I know that it's, it's my name on the ballot, but it's more than just a being about me. This is about, this is about the, the future generations. And JB, I think it was JB that, that said it, but uh, something similar to this. There's a quote that I read one time, and it, really, and it really stuck with me, and this is part of one of the reasons that I do things the way that I do. It said, a politician thinks about the next election. And I serve with a lot of politicians. I've actually heard people focus on the next election cycle and even talk about, well, we don't want to do anything with that bill because those people have donated a lot to our campaigns. That industry has been very good to us over the years, so we don't want to touch them right now. We don't want to touch their tax credit. We don't want to do anything with them. We're just going to leave them alone. That's a politician thinking about the next election. But the quote that I read, it said, politicians think about the next election. Statesmen think about the next generation. And that's what this is about. We have to think about the next generation and future generations to be able to have the benefits of the country that we all have, those freedoms, those God-given rights enshrined in our Constitution. So that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm going to continue to fight for. So I would ask that you donate if you can. If you're willing, we need volunteers to knock doors with us. If you don't want to be out knocking doors, we need to make phone calls. We have 40,000 people to reach. And not just once, we want to reach them as many times as we can. We want to call them, we want to knock on their door, we want to send mail to them, we want them to see TV, we want to see Facebook ads. We want to reach them as many times as we can so they can understand what this election is about. And then I will ask one other thing. This doesn't cost you anything. This is quick, easy, free. If you can do this, we do have bumper stickers. So we have those at the back table. If you would like one of those, that makes you a, a mobile billboard everywhere you go advertising, advertising for us. Uh, let's all be honest, the name Dom does stick out. People, people will notice it, okay? It may not be the best ballot name, but it does stick out in people's minds. So if you can stick one of those on your vehicle, that, it, that would be huge for us. That would be a huge help, a huge blessing as well. But anything you can do to help, every little bit helps. The more people that we have involved, the greater groundswell of support we have. Once Congressman Bridenstine does get confirmed by the Senate, he's already been appointed by Trump, he still has to be confirmed by the Senate, once he gets confirmed, the election will happen within 60 days. This is going to turn into a sprint really quickly. So we need, like, like, like JB said, we need to do as much as we can right now. We are firing on all cylinders. We have a great team, a lot of people putting in a lot of late nights, uh, you know, not, not getting a lot of sleep right now. 
because we know that any, at any moment this could turn into, into a 60-day sprint to the finish. So we are working hard. We will continue to work hard. We have, yes, if you don't, haven't liked our page on Facebook, please do that. Share our post as we put those. We do have yard signs also. If you'd like a yard sign now, we'll, you can grab them tonight. Or if you want one, we'll deliver it before the election. You know, we'll just put it in your yard right, you know, a week or two before the election. But whatever you can do, I would ask that you get involved. You help in, in any way you can. Uh, I know it's my name on the ballot, but this isn't just about me. This is, this is about the future of, of the state, of our country. And so it's, it's humbling for me to stand up here and, and ask you for your support. But I remember when I was first running, and I think I've told other people this, I don't know if I told Brian this, I'm pretty sure I told Matt this when he was working on, on Brian's campaign. Uh, when I was first running, um, it, was, it was hard to ask, ask people for, for donations, for money. And it's still not easy, I still, nobody enjoys it, I still don't enjoy it. But at one point in time, as I, as I was praying about it and, and thinking about it, I just came to the realization, and I believe it was God showing it to me, that I'm not asking about this money for me. This money is not lining my pockets. It's not going to pay for my meals. It's not going to pay for my gas. That, this money is not going to me. This money is going so that I can serve other people, so that I can serve, all, serve, serve the community, serve the district, serve all of you. So it's a lot easier for me to ask for your support because this, this isn't about me. Yes, again, it's my name on the ballot. And yes, we, we will need votes when that time comes because votes is ultimately what wins elections. But the more people we can re reach to get those votes, the better off we will be, especially in such a short time frame. So appreciate you all coming out tonight. We do have a few more things still. Is David D'Ambroso here? Did he make it here yet? All right, he's here. Um, before I throw it over to him for the live auction stuff that we do have, reminder that we do have silent auction items. We do have the punch wall items. Uh, there's prizes inside that for $25. You can uh, punch out one of those and the, the value in there, the gift cards, different things is a minimum of $25. So you at least get your, your money back in that. Uh, Camille and Haley, they are great. They are here and you guys do have a table set up somewhere. They have a, a table in the back with their, their CDs. I have all their CDs. Christmas coming up. The Christmas album is great. So go back by there and you can buy their CDs as well. And David, if you're ready, I will throw it over to you and you all be patient with him. He hasn't gotten a lot of sleep either. His daughter was born how many days ago? Four days ago. Four days ago. <laughs> so first, first time calling and everything. And he's out here helping us out. So David, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, David.